satellite launch in 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, satellite launch in T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, we have liftoff. Hi everyone. So as we know, Israel pulled off a historic um, satellite launch today. We managed to launch 104 satellites in one go. So we're going to begin by telling you what makes that historic. Russia basically launched 37 satellites in one go in 2014. And India today launched 104 satellites, which is the largest number of satellites um, that has been launched in one go um, ever. <laughs> so that what, that's what makes it historic. Um, to tell you what exactly went into this historic launch, what do we need for a historic launch? We need dedicated scientists. Uh, we need fuel, lots of fuel. Um, we need a satellite launch vehicle. Um, and of course, we need satellites, um, the satellites that we're going to launch. Um, so now that we have all the elements, we basically tell you what kind of satellites, um, the PSLV, that's a polar uh, satellite launch vehicle that uh, ISRO has, was carrying um, today morning. We had the Car Carter sat um, satellite, which is the biggest, uh, that's a payload, um, that's the biggest payload, it's 1378 kgs. Um, that, was a, that was the main thing, that was the real purpose of this launch. Uh, what we had was also 103 smaller nano satellites, which are about 10 to 20 kg. Um, out of all of these 104 satellites, we basically had only three Indian satellites and the rest 101 were foreign satellites and you know over the years us has become one of the biggest customers for isro and we had like what 90 88 actually um satellites from one american company and eight other satellites from other american companies so basically we had 96 us satellites that were launched um today now that we have we know what was in the the, uh, the launch vehicle we're going to tell you exactly how, um, you know, what is the trajectory of a uh, launch vehicle. Um, so, okay, great. We move on to the, um, to ground zero. So we have Sri Harikota, you have the PSLV. Um, it's nine, it's 9.28 a.m. in the morning. Um, we have liftoff. What exactly happens when uh, a launch vehicle, you know, when it, when it launches, um, the first thing that happens is that it needs to escape gravity, which is, well, it's a big task, right? Like you, these satellites basically weigh one, three, seven, eight kgs and getting them out of the Earth's atmosphere, beating gravity basically means they need to accel accelerate really quickly. Um, in the first stage, for example, you go from, you know, zero to 451 meters per second in about 0.69 uh, seconds. That's how quickly a launch vehicle accelerates. In this, this the first stage ends um, in about two minutes. It's the the launch vehicle is at sixty one kilometers altitude. It's it's cruising at two one six five meters per second. Um, that's when the first stage ignition you know goes off, and you have to understand the launch vehicle basically sheds its different parts as it goes along, um, and after the first stage ends. Uh, you know, it's shed its first stage ignition. The second stage uh, begins uh, in about two minutes. 
it lasts for what let's say about 10 minutes in 10 minutes you basically move from 61 kilometers to 222 kilometers and now we are traveling at 4045 meters per second um, and with the second st with, with the second stage ending the satellite launch vehicle is out of the earth's atmosphere uh, in the final two stages basically um, you have the vehicle moving from um, four minutes in between four minutes 24 seconds to eight minutes uh, you know it, it goes up to an altitude of 435 kilometers and it's moving at a you know awesome speed of 48 to 4824 meters per second um, and then it hits the last and final stage in about 16 minutes uh, 47 seconds it's traveling at 509 kilometers uh, it's sorry it, it is at the altitude of 509 kilometers which is where around it's around the area where you know we launch our <laughs> satellites um, this is where the orbit of the satellite would be so this is basically the final stage where the satellites are separated from the vehicle and uh, the Carto sat will, will be the first one at 510 kilometers which will enter orbit and then you have the smaller satellites basically making their way out as well um, just to let you know these satellites are going to improve our ability to map out land resources water um, road networks um, so that's basically they're all focused on the earth and we're going to get more and more information about our planet from these satellites that were launched today um so if you have any questions about today's launch please write to us in the comment section um and we'll be happy to answer them why do people come to india to do satellite launches the reason why increasingly isro is beginning to uh, do a lot of commercial launches um, is because we're good at it, firstly, and we're also very cheap. Um, as you would know, with the Mangalyaan launch, we did it at, like, you know, a very, like, a small fraction of the cost that other countries do it at. So it's cheaper for other countries to, and other foreign companies to have ISRO basically launch their satellites along with ISRO's own satellites. So like, like we said, um, the 88 uh, satellites from America for, from one company called Planet, um, you know, those are basically commercial, uh, commercial agreements between ISRO's uh, commercial arm, that's Antrix, and the private company. How much does it cost? We don't have estimates for how much this launch costs, but what we do know is that uh, ISRO plans to recoup about half of the costs for this launch um, from the private companies and the private entities that um, that whose satellites uh, this um, this PSLV was carrying. Um, so that's about half of the cost recovered uh, for for ISRO. Ibrahim Taylor says the money should have been spent on the poor and other things. What's the uh, view? Why are we fo why does India focus on innovation and space technology? Well, I mean, I and in my personal view, we have space for both um, the ISRO is very efficient at what it does and um, you know if we weren't relying on ISRO we would uh, we would be relying on some other space agency to get the same kind of data that we are getting now and please understand like we said the the data that comes from these satellites is used to help you know map land use patterns water resources which is ultimately going to help a lot of people uh, in the country so tell us about the nan nano satellites what are they? Who are they? Who owns them? So nano satellites are basically um, they are they are about you know they're not, as as the name suggests they're small. Uh, for example, if the CartoSat was seven hundred and fourteen kilograms, the nano is would be basically ten to twenty kilograms, which is why um, which is why it's possible for ISRO to make space for so many of them. So like we said. There was only one big satellite on that launch vehicle. There were 103 smaller satellites. Um, and um, yeah, these basically uh, are, don't really sort of, I mean, they don't have, you know, all the uh, full-fledged sort of equipment. They basically work um, in tandem with each other to provide wholesome data.
somebody is asking how the nano satellites are put in the world. How are they, if you can just run through again, how the nano satellites right. put in to take them so, from the top. So, you know, we have had a historic launch today, 104 satellites launched by ISRO today morning at 9.28 a.m. Um, how does that happen? Like we, like we mentioned earlier, we have a bigger satellite, 714 kilograms, smaller satellites. They all incredibly fit into the, the satellite launch vehicle that you can see in our uh, little trajectory uh, right at the start. That's what the PSLV actually looks like. Um, the nano satellites are part of this. It's integrated into this. It's built into the vehicle launch. So both the CARTOSAT and the nano satellites were part of the vehicle launch. And as 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 we explained earlier, when the inje uh, when uh, the CARTOSAT gets uh, injected or you know put into its orbit, the nano satellites are also launched. You know, a, a few minutes later, or around that time. So they're on that same um, satellite launch vehicle. How do nano satellites move in specific path, and how do they change that? Okay, that's a good question, and I'm going to have to call up the ISO scientists to answer that. And we will get back to you with the answers in the comment section. The escape velocity is 11.2 kilometers per second, right? So can anyone tell me how it can escape the Earth's atmosphere with 4 kilometers per second? Well, so um, the the speed at in stage 1 is um, 2165 meters per second. Uh, by the time you enter uh, stage two, it's four uh, four thousand uh, forty five meters per second. That's where it sort of escapes uh, gravity and leaves the Earth's atmosphere. And that, I if I can calculate right, is what it takes to overcome the. No, but if you're putting it into orbit, you're not actually. Yeah, it gets yeah. less force as you get further away. Yeah, there's. Uh, Show us your suitcase. I'm keen to know how much the satellites weigh. Well, this is what uh, a nano satellite basically is just like taking luggage up into space. It weighs about 10 to 20 kilograms. Um, what, what, what functions do they, do they all have? They all are um, Earth facing satellites. Um, uh, the ones which are launched by planet, for example, the nano satellites will help you know uh, track environmental changes. They are basically focused. All of them are focused on the Earth, so they are going to be mapping Earth uh, in high resolution. So you're going to get better resolution data from every part of of the of the of the country of the world actually uh, with the nano satellites. Um, and like I said, we had 103 of them on board. So I saw Russia. What do, what's Russia got to do with this picture? Russia, we managed to surpass Russia today uh, with our 104 uh, satellite launch. It was, it was like you know almost of uh, no, more than two times what um, Russia had basically launched in 2014. That was 37 satellites. ISRO launched 104 satellites uh, today morning. So that makes it. Uh, one of the largest launches of satellites in one go, um, and it's it's a historic, it's a record actually for ISRO. Somebody's asking, what will these nano satellites do? Um, the nano satellites, um, again, these are satellites which are you know focused on the Earth. They will be generating data about land use patterns, about um, you know distribution of water resources. They will improve the improve the. Uh, they will improve the resolution uh, f at which we have data about uh, about the Earth, and they will be basically covering um, the entire planet. Um, and yeah, uh, it's it's going to be we are going to have to look forward to seeing what kind of information comes out of these satellites. The CARTOSAT is um, focused, uh, you know, it's it basically orbits in the in the solar orbit, so it follows the trajectory of the sun um, and it will be generating data about India but again like I said land use patterns water resources um, it's it will help in mapping drawing better maps uh, for for India How um, can public use the weather and geosatellite data for commercial purposes? How can the public use uh, for commercial? So, well 
for these particular satellites, uh, the data would not be available right away. Um, how the public uses, well, a lot of this information, because it's uh, launched, uh, these satellites are launched by ISRO, uh, you know, is available th uh, to us through the government websites and reports prepared by the government. Uh, whether there's a direct way to access this data, we would have to check with ISRO. Um, and of course, we'll get back to you if there's a way of uh, directly tracking data coming from these sat satellites. And um, comment, uh, comment on this video, share this video, share your questions uh, in the comment section. Who would activate um, these satellites? Is it ISRO's responsibility? It's not ISRO's responsibility to activate the satellites that were launched by the other um, by the uh, the other entities. I mean, ISRO, like I said, uh, owns only three of these satellites, and for which they have complete control over you know the, the orbiting and the navigation of these satellites. For the rest, these are like other space companies, private companies, government entities who would be um, you know tracking. The, 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 they have control over their satellites. ISRO was basically responsible for the launch and getting them into orbit. And did um, Russia also launch all nano satellites when they did that? No, the way a lot of these launches work, uh, so no, Russia did not launch only nano satellites. Um, the way a lot of these launches work is that you have a main payload. For example, for India, for this launch, you had the Car Carter Sat. That was the main payload, and the when you have when the launch vehicle is able to take in more you know payload they basically you know cram in all the other nano satellites uh, so that it's it's efficient in a way it's cost effective you don't have to keep launching uh, these satellites in a different uh, on a different vehicle so uh, these nano satellites are supplementary to the main satellite and no russia also launched a main uh, had a main payload and uh, some other nano satellites we assume um, it's never just nano satellites uh, going into space um, How come 94 satellites came from the U.S. and what are they used for? Used for? So again, uh, they are, there were 96 satellites actually um, that, uh, that American satellites that ISRO was um, launched today. Um, and uh, like we pointed out, 88 of them actually came from one company and these are private companies. Uh, and actually, uh, <laughs> there has been some amount of pushback in, uh, in the U.S. Uh, for using uh, ISRO and like our re Indian resources because we are able to do it more uh, cheaply, uh, but like the the information and the data from these other satellites, which are owned by private companies, will basically come uh, will go to the to them, and it's not as if you know there is a government body involved. Um, these are just private companies, uh, which would be uh, generating data from the web the satellites that they have launched. Will these nano satellites be moving like a herd, or will they be scattered within the orbit path? For the satellites that were launched from the same company, there is some, uh, and we do not know this clearly because, like we said, it's a private. Those are private companies. For ISRO, for example, we know what the satellites will do and the kind of orbits they'll have. For these other companies, uh, they are private companies. They have their own agendas and the way they work. Uh, but no, like if you think about the hundred and um, Three satellite nano satellites. No, they would not be moving clusters. The eighty-eight that came from the same company, there might be some amount of like, you know, they might be synchronized and be sort of uh, applied towards the same data collection goal. Uh, but that that doesn't really mean that there'll be you know there'll be a cluster of nano satellites moving around around the globe. No, I, that's not how how it works really. What is Israel's next grand plan? Oh, well, we'll have to ask them. I mean, we've uh, gone to the moon. I guess the I guess Mars is, is the next frontier, but uh, but no, like so commercial, in terms of grand plan, uh, the idea is actually ISRO is doing more commercial launches and they intend to, as far as we can see, continue doing a lot of commercial launches because uh, it is a revenue generating industry. It's a commercial enterprise and we seem to be very good at these things. I mean, we have launched about 180 foreign satellites by, by now, and um, ISRO does it at a very low cost, and it was a success. Like you could see, there was uh, nothing went wrong, and we we're happy about it. And well, it's, uh, this, this is what ISRO is really you know, doing right now in terms of grand plans. 
will you have to wait and wait and watch thanks for watching thank you so much we hope you have been able to explain a little bit about what happened today morning please share the video please share more comments and questions that you might have and we'll we'll get back to you on the questions that you asked that we didn't have answers to and we'll try and um you know and we'll we'll be back with more of this stuff thank you